looks like I'm actually attempting to make YouTube content. This is something uh, my in-law in-laws right brought back from uh, from uh, the US even though that does sound like German. Welcome to the first episode of a series that I'm calling a hacker's perspective where I will give you my hot take uh, as a hacker on whatever topic is clickbaity enough for me to bother making a video about. If this is the first time you are watching one of my videos, please consider leaving a comment, liking, subscribing, all that fun jazz. My name is Melvin, I go by the alias Flangvik pretty much everywhere, and I get paid to break into some of the most mature and often large organizations in the world um, as a job, as a day job. And I am extremely lucky to be one of the very few who does this full time and I'm, and I'm able to live by doing this, but essentially I'm a hacker, just, just ethical also known as, a, as an ethical hacker. And what better topic to start off with, with uh, and what topic better to start off with than Linus Tech Tips getting hacked, the largest tech enterprise YouTube, or YouTube channel organization slash whatever you want to call it, getting hacked by uh, what seems to be a rather unsophisticated attack. So let's kick this off. This started on March 23rd, where I woke up and went to YouTube and saw that the Linus Tech Tips main channel were no longer available, but instead I found this really interesting live stream by Elon Musk. He was talking about cryptocurrency and how that if I sent him a bit of my, my hard earned uh, Dogecoin or whatever, I would get 2x the amount sent back rather quickly. And so I did. Uh, I did not. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is. Uh, this is a, I would definitely say this is an ongoing uh, problem that YouTube has, where uh, creators, both small and large, gets hacked and their YouTube channel gets turned into typically either a Tesla or SpaceX lookalike account, where none other than Elon Musk is live streaming about cryptocurrency. The concept is rather simple. A YouTube channel gets hacked, a live stream gets put up, comments gets disabled, live chats gets disabled. Elon Musk will be talking about cryptocurrency and there will be a QR code with some text stating that if you scan the QR code and send some hard-earned cryptocurrency to that wallet, you will get 2x the amount back. So what happened? Well, Linus states that an employee of his received an email about a potential sponsorship. In that email, there was a zip attachment and inside that zip attachment, there was a PDF file. A PDF file. That PDF file turned out to be an executable. We'll talk more about that later. The employee executed the or attempted to open the PDF file. Nothing appeared. That didn't really alert the employee. The day went on and it turned out that this PDF file was an executable and it was a what's called a stealer. Or I'm not sure it's a specific malware class, but let's just say that it's a malware class called a stealer. Now, what a stealer does is that it attempts to uh, steal whatever potentially interesting and valuable information off your computer, send it back up to a host server, typically referred to as maybe a C2, even though it's technically not a remote control software, it's just a stealer it gets sent off to some sort of command panel somewhere the data gets stored and the attacker can access it and you might be initially thinking you know okay so they ran away with his passwords right uh, or maybe some other interesting information that is commonly found in software but surely London tech tips has mfa so they shouldn't be able to access anything with that password right and yes Linus tech tips does use mfa However, the Steelers also decrypts and retrieves the session cookies or the cookie data from the compromised host's browser. And this is how they get in. So if you don't know this, when you authenticate to a website, the website issues you a set of cookies that are stored and sent inside the cookie header every time you talk to the website. This way you don't have to log into the website every time you access it, which would be extremely annoying. Now, if you can get this cookie by, you know, compromising the host, you take that cookie out from somebody's session, put it into your own browser and bada bing, you're authenticated and you can access uh, or whatever resource that is accessible using that cookie. And this is what happened. Now, this is fairly common, and this is something me as an attacker in my day-to-day -day work also, if, if possible, attempt to do, because that means I could just skip trying to get the user to accept the MFA prompt, or by some other mean, have, means having to social engineer the user into, into giving me MFA access or giving me the MFA code, whatever. If I can just get the cookies, I could just access whatever sessions the user has ongoing at that time, and I'm off to the race. So this happened, uh, poor Linus had to wake up naked in the middle of the night and started his sort of remediation efforts, 
Uh, now, he doesn't really give into, go into much detail about sort of his, his incident response plan or remediation efforts, but my understanding of how he referenced this was that there doesn't, definitely is a plan and there definitely is a procedure, but he indicates that that procedure maybe should have been dry ran previously and that maybe he should have been more familiar with the process so that when you're butt naked in the middle of the night fucking around in the access control management system you have uh you don't you don't accidentally do anything dumb or you, you just don't fail because that would suck now that the big thing the big takeaway that i want to want to take from Linus tech tips is this response uh, he made a response video or sort of a sort of a off the mouth video if we will talking about what happened is that he definitely doesn't blame the employee the employee was socially engineered and social engineering is the common weakness when breaching companies these days sometimes it's just easier to fool a human or 10 instead of having to dig through external exposed resources and attempt to find some sort of all outdated software or god forbid even find and resource your own all day or exploit what is also really interesting is that linus tech tips mentions his antivirus solution and he claims that the the solution they were using uh, definitely threw an alert but that nobody acted on this alert and it was found later during the breach now, what I would really like to know is not, not necessarily what solution they use, but is this a Tire 1 EDR XDR SIM solution? You know, a CrowdStrike, Carbon Black, Elastic, Elastic, whatever. Or is this some sort of more common antivirus solution like Norton, Avast, uh, McAfee, whatever? You know, from my perspective, that would be really interesting to know. Uh, also, given that, you know, if typically with these more expensive Tire 1 EDR solution, there also is sort of a, uh, sort of a passive sock feature where they're the reactive intelligence threat hunting team will give you alerts when they think they see something in the environment even though you haven't picked up on it which would be really interesting to see in this case as well and it definitely sounds like linus is in the starting phase of reworking their incident response plan and making sure their procedures are on top of things but he also puts a fair bit of criticism towards youtube talking about how you know a session suddenly uh, originating from a totally different uh, ge geographical location far far away should trigger some sort of uh, extra mfa validation or just straight straight you know invalidate the session now while this definitely would increase the bar in terms of youtube security uh, attackers know that you could simply use a, a proxy or a vpn or a custom vpn setup on the vps provider in order to change your geographical location to match that of the you know the, the victim other layers of that again you know you could start detecting vpn vps providers data center ips and such to make sure that the session is actually coming from a, a real ip but then you would have the issue of you know people working at data centers or people using vpn on a daily basis because of government regimes or whatever linus also talks a bit about what we would refer to as sort of high risk sessions or high risk logins where uh, a session suddenly originating from another device and ip starts doing drastic changes within a short period of time that would trigger some sort of high risk detection and then it would lock down the account or alert or require require mfa or whatever um, while that is definitely valid, I think the, the, the easiest point here for Google is just to, to train an AI and ML engine. Now, I know barely anything about machine learning, but I would think, uh, logically speaking, that if you would train a machine learning algorithm on a data set of spam and scam videos, it would give you a sort of effective baseline to at least flag uh, videos trying to do these sort of scams. And it would also maintain some sort of secrecy between how they actually detect this, which would make the, the, the attackers keep guessing. In fact, AI and ML is something that we are facing in the cybersecurity space when it comes to evading EDR solutions. Uh, tire 1 EDR solutions are continuously improving their AI and ML engines based on new data sets, which makes it much harder for us performing targeted operations against uh, customers, uh, achieving the bypasses that we need in order to start our operations. Now, I have a dream, and it is definitely a dream with a big D for dream. Um, I would love, in my dream, to be able to have a more technical in-depth chat with somebody uh, you know at Linus Tech Tips or whatever in order to sort of oh, I'm laughing while I'm saying this because it's never going to happen whatever the dream is imagine having a technical sit down with Linus Tech Tips and being able to get the informed information about what happened his remediation steps his plans and make sort of a even maybe a detailed YouTube video about it so that others can learn so that other growing YouTube creators you know understand that yes you are now a 10 team or 20 person team youtube creator house 
that is basically a company and you need to prioritize security more than just people having their phones as MFA. Uh, and that, it's always something that I've thought about, you know, before the breach, you know, how does a, an organization growing as fast as Linus Tech Tips with the public exposure within tech as Linus Tech Tips approach security? You know, do they, do they hire consultancy companies to get expertise on it? Do they hire people within cybersecurity? It's really interesting. So again, my dream, my dream was just to have a talk. Uh, but I'm, I'm prepared to just, just have that as a dream. Cheers.